So the next thing we're going to look at is a standing hip knee and foot alignment exercise that I made up. Uh, and it plays into how the PNF patterns work. Okay, and we're just going to do part of it. I have a whole sequence of it. So uh, let me show it to you first. You're going to go into a lunge. And you may want to come around and look from the back to see. So when we're standing in a lunge, there are several things that go wrong. One of them is that our hip goes outside, and then our knee comes in, and our big toe pops up. And as we do that, it puts a lot of pressure on our knee. Okay? And when we run like this, we get knee problems. Right? And a lot of people tear their meniscus or do things with their ACL. And it has to do with the alignment of the knee. So what we're going to do is press the ball of our big toe down, keep our hip nice and square, and reach our knee to our pinky toe. So that is essentially that pattern. Yeah? All right, and we're going to push the ball of the big toe down and open the knee to the pinky toe just 10 times. Every time you open the knee, you're going to press the ball of the big town, toe down even more. Okay? So get yourself in a lunge, and you can do your, your right foot first. And you put your hands on your hips. You can hold on to something if you need to. And the back heel can be popped or not. And actually, we'll start from... Lift your right hip outside, so that's not where we want it. I want you to pull it back underneath. Do that again. Reach your right hip outside, and now pull it back underneath. One more time. Reach your right hip outside, now pull it underneath. Good. So as it's underneath, your left butt cheek should be squeezing. Your abs should be pulled up and in. Okay, we're going to try and hold there. Press the ball of your big toe down nice and strong. And now turn your knee to your pinky toe. And don't let your hips move. Let's do that 10 times. Go for it. One. Now stay there. Press the ball of the big toe down again if it's popped off. And again, push it out. Two. Press the ball of the big toe down. Smile, Anne. And three. I made this up for Anne. And four. It did work, didn't it? And five. I don't like to waste time. And six. Pull your abs in a little more if you can. And seven. I'm sure Eileen's having fun as well. And eight. And the ladies are writing. And nine. And ten. Come to stand. All right, let's do the other side. So you're going to be in a lunge. Now your left foot is forward, and our abs are up and in. And let's do the hip hikes. So reach your left hip up, and now swing it down in the middle. And as you're doing this, already try and think of not letting your knee go wibble wobble around. Okay, swing it out to your left, or your right, no, your left. And bring it back. I'm trying to mirror you, so I'm opposite. And again, swing it out to your left. And then bring it back. Good. Now, keep it here. Press the ball of your big toe down and open the knee to your pinky toe. Good. And release. And again, press the ball of the big toe down and open to your pinky toe. Nice. And release. And again, three. And bring it back. Four, bring it back, five, double check your abs, make sure they're up and in, bring it back, six, bring it back, seven, bring it back, eight, bring it back, nine, bring it back, ten, good, and come up. All right, take a moment to write anything, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the twist and untwist of the foot and how this helps to create that. 
but that is not actually written, so if you want to write it down for yourself for later, you'll need to do that. Or you can go check it out on YouTube. Just let it come back to little. Uh, so if you're working with someone who's injured, you don't want to let them go in to the knee going past the midline. So you would just have them come back to the center if they can handle that type of correction. But you may just have to let them go wherever they're going to go until they gain enough control in the hip joint and mobility in the foot joint to be able to move their knee like that. It doesn't matter. You're just trying to get it so that you're emphasizing the front leg. You can turn it out and do parallel, whatever feels good. In my experience, you've had to adapt it to what the person can do. So, I mean, if you can drop it down to a big lunge, that'd be great. But generally, the people that are doing these have knee issues, so that's not going to happen. But for you, you could go back to a full lunge and really get a nice rectus femoris and psoas stretch in the back of your back leg while you're doing this and make it a you know, nice ex exercise. Any other questions about that? OK, so. Now I want to, you can have a seat, unless you have more questions. So now I just want to talk about the relationship of the foot and the hip to the knee, okay? So, uh, well, first I want to talk about the foot. So the first thing in our foot that we didn't talk about is there's a twist and untwist that happens in the foot when we walk. And if our intrinsic muscles of our feet are not working properly, we will not have that twist and untwist in one of the ways. So let me just explain it and I'll get Herman's foot too. So our foot is very mobile and it will turn into a twist rotation like this on a longitudinal axis when the foot is turning into a bony lever. So this is when we take a step we actually do our push off through our big toe and it turns into a twist. So if you're a person who doesn't have that twist and has a hard time getting their big toe down, you're not getting much push off when you're going or as much as you could get, all right? So that's the twist. Then as you go through heel strike, you actually go through an untwist. So you should land almost in an S shape across your foot and this is the untwist. And so if you have tight muscles, you'll have a hard time doing the untwist. All right? So the patterns, when done, they help to facilitate the twist and the untwist all the way through. All right? And so it creates the mobility and strength to get the proper twist and untwist in the foot. So I just wanted to point that out. So can we see how when we untwist, we're kind of like this, and then everything's all floppy? But then when we go through the twist, it becomes a strong bony lever to push off from. And that's the wonderful thing about the foot, but it's also a very difficult thing about the foot because they get injured or going in the wrong patterns really quite easily. Especially when we're in shoes and doing a lot of athletics and things in shoes, it becomes huge problems. I'm all about the Vibrams or just going barefoot on the beach. All right, so now the relationship between the foot and the hip to the knee. So here is our knee in the middle of our hip and our foot. Now everything is connected to everything. So we're just look, talking about what's going on in the foot, knee, and the hip. Oh my. Herman's really got some structural issues. 
It is. He's, he needs a, it's a lot of stuff going on. So what happens at the knee and what happens at the foot directly affects, I'm sorry, what happens at the hip and what happens at the foot directly affects what happens at the knee, okay? So if there's a funky pattern going on at the hip and a funky pattern going on at the foot, you will end up with the knee problem. So again, like I said earlier, in most cases, wherever the problem is, that's not actually the cause of the problem. That's the result of the problem. So if you have a dysfunction going on in the foot or a dysfunction going on the, in the knee, uh, something in the hip, something will go on in the knee. So let's say you have weak hip muscles over here it's going to encourage your knee to pull in a little bit more, okay? Now, I'm just saying this because I can and I know, and so then you will go to traditional care, and a lot of times they will continue to focus on the knee, all right? And they won't do much to address what's going on over at the hip, okay? Not always, but the way insurance companies work is for the most part, they will only pay for the location with which the injury is in, all right? They will not pay for treatment to be given where the problem is coming from because that's not where the pain is. So we're back to a symptom-based care system rather than a root cause resolution system, all right? The other thing that can happen is if you have something funky going on in the foot, it'll turn the knee in or out, all right? And then again, you'll go for a regular care and they'll address your knee. They'll do a surgery on your knee, they might give you PT for your knee, but they won't do anything to address the fact that your foot has got problems going on. Not always, but more often than not, all right? So, us as Pilates teachers, we can take that moment to when the uh, issue is happening at the knee and they've done everything that they can to address the knee and the problem is still not going away and we can address the alignment issue that's going on in the foot and the hip to correct so that the knee can go into proper alignment um, and then prevent or resolve any residual issues that are going on with that particular person and bring them to that next level of enhancement in their life. Does this make sense to those of you that are Pilates teachers? Yes. And these patterns that I just taught you will do it for you. All right. So all you have to do is start working with them and teaching them to your students. Um, and it really helps to rebalance these things out quite easily and quite quickly. Okay. So just to reiterate, the alignment of the leg that we just went over. Ball of the big toe is down, knee is reaching to the pinky toe, and the hip is aligned through here. So you should have a line going straight up through each of these joints down through right between your second and third toe. And that's the alignment exercise that I just gave you. The PNF patterns of the leg and the feet will help to strengthen and stretch the muscles that need to make that happen. Um, and then that particular alignment exercise will help to educate your student what they need to do while they're doing their movement patterns. And Anne will attest to the fact that it will make your knee stop hurting because she has done this already with me, so it's proven. <laughs> well, at least as an N of one, well, actually an N of very many in my experience, but 